Hey guys, so baby belt 10.1, 10.2, whatever we're going at right now. The build video wasn't great that we had started with, so we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna start with the extruder side. Now I've already put the extruder gear on the stepper motor. We've already modified these motors. That is all covered elsewhere, but note that when you put the extruder gear on, that the worm gear is on the curved part of the shaft, not the flat shaft, so you can get it down as far as you can. And then you use M3 by 10 millimeter bolts with nuts to sink it down to the side. All right, there's that piece. This is the other side. We're gonna load it up with the worm gear right now. So we're gonna take worm gear, I recommend resin printing these. Take the side that fits the motor shaft and stick it in. And then take, oops, take some bearings them on. Now it is important that this can rotate freely. So go ahead and test it and make sure it spins smoothly and that all is good. You want the top bearing to be flush, and the bottom bearing to be slightly recessed. Once you've done that, take another motor and pop it in there using some M3 by 10 volts. There we go. So we have the motor on with the worm gear and the bearings. Let's take the motor wire through there just for fun for now. And we have the other extruder side on. I'm going to take the extruder assembly, which will break down for a second. So we've got the extruder body with the TFE compression fitting in here. We've got a 608 held captive by this M3 by 10 volt. We've got the 608. We've got the idler arm. Goes in like that. And the whole assembly slides in. Now we can bolt that on. So this goes on here like that, of course. We take M10 volts, or M3 by 20, sorry bolts and feed them on in. And all of the bolts except for this one get backed up with nuts to help hold them in place. And the final step for this is to put the extruder helper pin in, which goes into this bearing and then holds the other end of the extruder body shaft. We'll go grab one. All right, we'll go ahead and grab one here. Please pardon my birdie bird in the background. He is quite loud. All right, we've got an extruder helper pin. Go ahead and grab a pair of pliers and push it in. Start it off with my hand. And this is supposed to be a stug fit, it's a friction fit. So I'm going to take this and just squeeze the pin in between the motor and the uh, top bearing surface there gonna work it in and spin a little bit. Obviously a pair of channel locks would do this better, but for demonstration purposes, I'm doing what I have in hand, and there we go. This should not be able to spin by hand as it should be locked to the motor inside. So this extruder body is almost done. Next, we can just take a couple nuts and a M20. It's supposed to be an M10, I forgot now. Must be an M20. Yeah, it's M20. Sorry about that. 
been sick and busy with stuff. It's been a little preoccupied with things. So, all right. I'll take the nut. I want to make this a little easier to do. You take the nut and you feed it in a little slot there above the PTFE compression fitting, and then you just screw this in. You should never use a tool on this nut. Um, if you use a tool on it, you're likely to break the extruder helper pin, and that's done on purpose, because if we beef things up too much instead of the extruder helper pin breaking, your motor will break, and we really don't want that. So, all right, this side is done. We are going to be, and then we take the, uh, mount board. And as you can see, I've already screwed the uh, control board onto the uh, Marks Robin holder board, as it was called originally, because we were using Marks Robin, but we're using an SKR E3 V3 now. And make sure it's easier now So you put jumpers in the X, Y, and Z diag, not in the jumpers, not in the uh, end stops, but just on these diag pins here. And the board is ready to be installed. So we're actually going to be playing with some new beta parts today that anybody on the Discord channel has probably seen. This is a DC in jack board, and we're gonna see right now if it fits. Because the end goal, this is gonna be a 20 volt or 24 volt um, baby belt instead of the standard um, 12 volt baby belt. We're gonna try to power it with a laptop power supply and see how that works. So you and I will get to find out together if that's going to work or not. So let's see, the measurements work. Oops, I dropped it. So I'm bending over in front of the camera, I'm just going to gear up a new one. Okay, that fits, awesome. Sorry if that was off film, off, off frame. Gotta screw that in. There we go. So now we have these four pieces, and we can grab some zip ties and put it all together. And take the, I like to do this side first, so it's nice and obvious that the SD card and USB slot line up into the appropriate holes. I find it easier to take some zip ties and feed them through these holes here ahead of time, but not cinch them all the way down. So you don't have to hold it all together in your hand while you do this next part. Tails. Okay. Grab this guy here. Go ahead and install a button on it. Now these buttons, I usually include two in a kit because you can use them as filament runout sensors too. If you look at the bottom of the extruder, you'll see there's a hole here and a button will fit in there and act as a runout sensor if you so care to do that. Probably should have soldered the wires on first, but oh well. I'll get to that in a little bit. And that was my own key. Alright. Grab some more zip ties because it is time to put the brace piece in. You don't have to do half of one and then half of the other. You can do the control board first and so on and so forth.
There we go. That goes together fairly quickly, I like to think. Um, so next we're going to do the uh, rollers. So a commonly asked question is, how the heck does the driven roller go together? So I've got this gear here. Make sure that the hole is all nice and clear. Drop the roller in. Drop the bolt in onto the roller. Do 608. This guy here, make sure that the, the uh, nut side goes here. We grab one of these nuts. So put it on. Huh. Well, this isn't gonna work. There's a reason why this nut, this bolt is out and on the table. It's because it's a reject bolt. More McMaster car bolts to the rescue. That's where I get mine from. You can get them from Amazon too. assembled and had some issues so we'll see if this will work. So if you see I grab the nut not all the way down with these vice grips so that we can lock this bad boy all the way down into the roller. The roller has a recess cut into it for the nut to sit on so it doesn't spin. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have some issues here. Alrighty. Well, something to work on. We continue the build along, nevertheless. Another bearing. Bolt on, a nut, not a bolt, sorry, tighten it up, it doesn't have to be super tight, so there we go, now this gear should be locked in place with this roller and it's not, which means I'm going to have to look at this and I think this bolt here is actually not great. Um, sometimes the bolts have too high of a shoulder on them for the threaded part. That's a defect. I'll have to look into that um, for this build, but like I said, we'll move on. If anybody else is having that issue, please let me know. Alright. So over here, I've got, oops, I've got the belt. I've got the underbed support, which I've already put together with springs, just like that. And I've got the idler roller, which is similar to the driven roller, except it doesn't use any, just uses one nut and, of course, no gear. So we're going to take this, pop this in, pop this in. Grab this guy here. I'm just going to feed that in. And this can be tricky the first time you do it, just to line everything up. So you get the roller in, get the underbed support in, and then you get this in here. And I skipped a step. Oh no. Uh, what I wanted to do first, before I got all this in, was put these two pieces in. These are the underbed support holders. So, they go in here, like that, and here, like that. This goes 
goes in. So you can see me do this twice. So now we take four M20s, or M3 by 20s, sorry I'm not on my game today, and four M3 nuts, and we put the, uh, bed tensioning on, belt tensioning. I like to do the lower two first because they will pivot against the uh, they'll pivot the bed support piece against the frame and give you a good idea of what you're doing. This video, just like the previous build, I'm going to have the base build that I'm doing now, the gantry build, the wiring build, and the commission build. And I'm actually going to do the last two parts of the video this time. For this. At least I'm planning on it. All right. So there's the base all assembled. Anybody has any questions, let me know. I'll move on to the gantry now.